genius? I don't think so. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage, I have reviewed about 400 Hindi movies on the channel and today I want to talk about the Hindi language romantic comedy drama Lal Singh Chada. This is of course a big one. It's produced by and starring Amir Khan, one of the biggest film stars there is. Someone who picks his material carefully, someone who wants to do something special with his films, oftentimes incorporating important social messages but also never forgetting to entertain his audiences. A new Amir Khan movie has become an event, not just because of the pandemic, even before he only did like one movie a year for the last 10 years. His last starring role has been Thugs of Hindustan in 2018, which I haven't seen but is regarded as a pretty big disaster. But the two before that were Secret Superstar and Dangal, two massive hits. Secret Superstar I just reviewed a few days ago because it was the first film directed and also written by Advait Chandan. And now his second one being Lal Singh Chada. Though this time he didn't write the screenplay himself. Not only is Lal Singh Chada the comeback film of Amir Khan, or at least it strives to be that, but it's also the official Indian remake of Forrest Gump. And it was adapted by none other than Atul Kulkarni, which I found interesting. Now, it's certainly not an easy task to remake a movie with a cultural impact as big as that of Forrest Gump. Robert Zemeckis' film from 1994 has won six Oscars, including for lead actor Tom Hanks, who with it won two years in a row. It's a well-beloved modern American classic. But I'm also someone who isn't opposed to remaking stuff. Some of the greatest films are indeed remakes. And while Forrest Gump is American through and through, the basic premise and storytelling structure of the movie seem also pretty made for trying to adapt it for another country. The story of a simple man with an extraordinary journey that brings him close to many historical milestones in the history of his country. And India certainly has a very fascinating and tumultuous history that could very much lend itself to be tackled with the Forrest Gump framework. So I was quite curious to see what Advait Chandan, Amir Khan and the rest of the team would do here and if they could recapture that magic or better create their own. And since I really loved Secret Superstar and was super touched by it, I thought it's in the right hands. Well, I think Lal Singh Chada is fine, but that's about it. For a while I was very hopeful as it starts in this very warm and enchanting way, feeling like a comfy blanket of a movie, something that's not too bad in our recent time. We get the iconic descent of that feather that lands right at our protagonist's feet and while the original had that beautiful Alan Silvestri score, here we get our first song by Pritam and it's quite lovely. And so the story begins and in large parts it's pretty beat by beat the same thing, down to camera compositions and edits. But they of course also change things around which mostly comes down to adapting it to an Indian context incorporating events in Indian history or cultural icons of India. Which is what I was very curious about, but it honestly wasn't as much and impactful as I hoped it would be. There are also changes that make a bigger difference, mainly when it comes to two characters. The Lieutenant Dan character from the original, wonderfully played by Gary Sinise, makes way for a soldier from the enemy side. Which might be the movie's boldest choice and I really like the idea behind it. But the execution on the other hand isn't really that great and I think that's connected to the movie's biggest issue, which I will talk about in a moment. But first I want to address the other bigger change. The story of Rupa, played by Karina Kapoor, is quite different from that of Jenny in the original. I mean, the basic direction for the character is the same. Someone who comes from an abusive background tries to break free and make something out of her life but getting mixed up with the wrong people and suffering from several setbacks. Looking at the original Forrest Gump with more analytical eyes, there's something very icky and problematic about its treatment of American counterculture, the anti-war movement and the Black Panther Party. This is not a place to go into it more, but I really recommend you the YouTube video Forrest Gump What Are American Values by The Renegade Cut. This video was also the reason why I was a bit afraid to re-watch Forrest Gump before watching the Indian version. 
It has been a pretty big movie for me as a child and adolescent and I was afraid that as an adult and someone who became very disillusioned about the United States that I wouldn't like or connect to it anymore. But while the elements talked about in that video were certainly problematic, I couldn't resist the movie's beautiful lightning in a bottle charm. With that being said, I was happy that this time they actually picked something for Rupa that legitimately messed her up and not make her a Nexalite, for example, and paint some strange picture about non-conformist parts of society. In the Indian version, Rupa becomes involved with the entertainment industry and the shady people who have a grip on it. And with that aspect, the soldier from the opposing side, and of course the depiction of horrible events like the assassination of Indira Gandhi or terror attacks in Mumbai, you might think Lal Singh Chada is maybe a bit grittier than Forrest Gump, but the opposite is true. Zemeckis movie is told like this tongue-in-cheek American dream fairy tale and yet, especially after rewatching it, there's an edge to it as well and a sadness and sincerity. At its heart, it's a drama that can also be quite funny. Lal Singh Chada on the other hand, oftentimes, especially in the beginning, feels more like a comedy that every now and then turns into a very sentimental drama. Which I think is also due to the different taste of the audience. There's a certain sugary feeling to this version, through the direction, acting, but also music. I enjoyed the songs for the most part, but especially the background score felt very thick to me. I mean, Alan Silvestri's original score for Forrest Gump certainly falls to the sentimental side of things as well, but I just felt the music in La Singh Chada tried too much, which is also again connected to my biggest gripe with the film, which again I will talk about in a second. But first, I want to go back to that whole drama slash comedy vibe. Because funnily enough, while the original played more like a sincere drama than this one, it's also a lot funnier overall. Not that Lal Singh Chada isn't funny, I laughed and chuckled several times, but the juxtaposition of Tom Hanks' Forrest Gump, his simple demeanor and the many unexpected situations he finds himself in, and also how it unfolds and is edited with the heartfelt and naive voiceover narration and the flashbacks unfolding before our eyes, it just clicks. We get a voiceover narration in this one as well and the scenes in the train where more and more people are gathered around him to listen to his story were actually among my favorites. But the comedic beats seem broader and not as organic and genuine. Which isn't a big issue or anything, just part of the overall slightly different vibe of the movie. It misses some of the harder and more real feeling edges of the original. It feels techier, more artificial, even a bit fake. Which is also again connected to what I think kind of breaks the film. And while there are things that I really enjoyed, things that shouldn't go unmentioned and I will come back to them, I think it's about time to address the elephant in the room. Lal Singh Chada is a solid Forrest Gump adaptation and a good enough one-time watch, I think. But obviously, it's also a movie that stands or falls with its main character and lead actor. And that is Amir Khan. And in theory, he should be the perfect man to bring Forrest Gump to India. Forrest Gump is a movie that first and foremost wants you to feel something. A movie that wants to tug at your heartstrings. A fairy tale underdog story with big emotional payoffs. But unfortunately, Lal Singh Chada just wasn't able to pull that off. I mean, it's not as if I didn't feel anything, it actually did touch me a few times. But that's mainly because the strong source material is still kind of in place most of the time. But it always felt less than in the original. And I'm sorry to say, but Amir Khan as an actor just didn't do much for me in the movie. And the main reason is probably because I think he was just doing too much in the role. His acting, the mannerisms, the big open eyes, the things he's doing with his voice, the nervousness, it's all too big and it felt like a caricature. Especially when you have this contrast between Lal as a child, played by Ahmad Ibn Umar, and then changing to the Amir Khan Lal. While the child actor acts very restrained, almost as if he's not emoting at all, being somewhat trapped in his own world, the Amir Khan Lal is emoting like crazy, as if we are watching an unofficial sequel to Rajkumar Hirani's PK. Though I have to be fair, it's not like this throughout the entire film. The older Lal who is telling his story in the train and the same older Lal in the last segment of the movie work a lot better. There are also moments that were too much for me, like his reaction after the iconic reveal later on, 
but this older version nonetheless feels more restrained and also just more real. Creating a character involves several aspects and it's not just Amikan's overacting, but you also have the fact that the actor is already in his 50s. Now they do a decent job de-aging him and Karina Kapoor in their high school and college days, but this also adds another layer of artificiality to it. That's not easy to ignore. I'm sorry I have to say this, but it gave me kind of a creepy feeling overall. This digital smooth face, the hair and makeup, combined with Amikan's eyes opened up to the max and the way he talks and behaves. Now another element that adds to a character are the costumes. I felt as if all the choices were working to the characters and with that to the film's detriment. For example, putting Lal in so many super tight shirts. While Tom Hanks did a truly marvelous job bringing his forest to life, hitting the right balance of quirk and restraint, and most of all a sincere happy and sadness, Amir Khan comes across as if he's playing a grown-up child for the most time. And because of his physique and the costumes, he comes across as an awkward giant baby at times. And I understand that he doesn't want to give up the great shape that he is in, this buffed up body. But you have to ask yourself if it's really making sense or adding anything to the character he's playing. You could argue it amplifies this protector role that he has for Rupa, but at least for me it gives the character this latent feel of a giant muscular doofus. It also just doesn't make much sense. The character is never seen working out and the aesthetic obsession he has, like in the original, is running. He doesn't look like someone who runs huge distances. I'm sorry that I'm ranting, but it was just frustrating how all the choices regarding this character didn't really click for me. It's also really noticeable when Lal is involved in intimate scenes either with Manav Vijay's Mohammed or Karina Kapoor's Rupa. It feels as if you are watching two actors who are in two completely different movies. And with that I can now say that both Karina Kapoor and Manav Vijay are really good in this. I also enjoyed Naga Chaitanya quite a bit as his best friend Bala, though it's hard not to naturally compare to the original all the time. While Mona Singh is nice as Lal's mother, she's just no Sally Field in this. But I have to give a special mention to the actor who plays the young Rupa. I think her name is Hafsa Ashraf and she really is like a ray of sunshine. She is so natural and helps a lot to create that emotional bond between Lal and Rupa that's so important for the rest of the movie. And now before I conclude this longer than usual review, I have to say that I also felt the pacing of the film to be quite slow. And slow isn't automatically bad, but it did drag a bit, I think. It's about 20 minutes longer than the original and has not as many historical or cultural references that are directly incorporated into the narrative. It has more that are just there for a second, without any fascinating newsreel footage like in the original, apart from one instance, I think. Of course it adds songs, but with all story beats being that familiar and with the execution not being on the same level and without bringing enough own spirit to the table, it oftentimes just felt as if it's going through the motions and not much more. So in German I'd say, La Sing Chada ist gut genug um ihn einmal zu schauen. Insgesamt ist er aber auch recht uninspiriert und Amir Khan tut dem Film leider gar keinen Gefallen mit seiner immer etwas übertriebenen und fast schon karikaturenhaften Darstellung. I give Lal Singh Chada 6 out of 10. It's more like 5.9, but I don't do that. Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about Lal Singh Chada. And also, have you seen the original Forrest Gump and how did you like this adaptation? You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd and also on Patreon, simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like, and make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.